What's in the box? What's in the fucking box? Hello ladies and gents and welcome back to What's in the Box. My name is Jack and today we have another parcel, quite thin again, but that gives us an idea as to where it's from if you've been following along. So yes, I would assume this is from the same place as well. I'm going to get it open as quick as possible. I don't have any coffee today, sadly, so I just have to... I just have to do without, sadly. I'm going to get some nervous ticks there in a minute. My hands are going to start shaking. So I'm going to get right into it and then open up for you anyway. And so here it is, ladies and gents. Deus Ex Invisible War. Only on Xbox. Yes, another only on Xbox game to add to my collection. And boy oh boy, this is a controversial game. When it was released, it was panned. People didn't like it at all. But, later on in life, it has kind of picked up a bit of a, a cult following, you could say. It's so different from the first game that it doesn't really build on what the first game set down. Now, it's a game that I have attempted to play through many times, so I'm not 100% I'm not versed on where the game goes. But I've tried to play through it about at least 5 or 6 times since it was released and I just get to a point every time and I just stop, I stop playing, I just forget that I was playing it and I think it's to do with the loading zones and stuff which came from the Xbox version quite like Thief Deadly Shadows in one of the What's in the Box episodes because it was made specifically for the Xbox the PC kind of got a, a bad port of the Xbox game if you, if you get what I mean so it kept, kept things like small areas and loading zones, whereas the original Deus Ex was huge areas, expansive huge areas, and there was no loading zones. It's an interesting game, it's a game I really do want to finish because I love the Deus Ex series. It's one of those games, like the meme, you just, every time you hear Deus Ex, you can't help but install the game on your computer. I'm going to take off this CEX sticker, because yes, you were correct, it's from CEX. One thing that's good about all these games coming from CEX is not only that they're cheap, and that the postage is cheap because it's in Ireland, they come in nice packaging that's easy to open. I don't have to have a knife, I can just open it with my hands, which is, which is good. But yes, Deus Ex Invisible War, we're going to take a quick look at the back of the box, see if there's anything interesting. Welcome to a world of conspiracy and lies. Yes, Deus Ex in its character is conspiracy theories. Basically, in the Deus Ex world, you can take it that every conspiracy you ever heard is true, and which is quite cool because it, it really adds to the story. It kind of takes real world conspiracy theories and just makes them real. Yet again, I would assume that they are screenshots from the PC version at the time. And this is another game from about the time when games just started to really graphically change. This was 2003 and games just really started to graphically change at the time so you know if you didn't have a new computer or a higher AMD processor at the time or if you didn't have a good graphics card you were kind of shagged really you wouldn't be able to play the games because of all the shaders and the bloom lighting and weird stuff like that. Please say the manual is inside. Whoa, I nearly got a fright there because all I saw was there was no disc in the tray but it's lucky because it's over here. They've given me the plastic casing as well. I might as well take a quick look and make sure it's all right. Uh, a couple of scuffs, but nothing that's nothing that's hard to clean off. So I can give that, and I'll wipe down later. That's interesting that they included the transparent disc bag in the thing. You see, because these games are coming from loads of different CEX shops all around the country. Because I'm ordering them from different stores around the country, they're arriving at different times. It's quite, it's kind of nice though. It's like little presents every day. Yeah, Deus Ex: Invisible War. There's the manual. It is a good game, it's just different from the original and if you can go into the game thinking that okay it's the same story arc and it's the same people in the same world but the gameplay is different and you can just get over the kind of gameplay being a slightly bit different you'll enjoy it that way then. It, it, things like they took, out, um, they took out ammo types so there's only one ammo type in the game for every gun. That was kind of weird, I don't really like that. The inventory is quite small and not complex in the way that Deus Ex the original had. And just strange things like the HUD is very unusual, I'm not a big fan of the HUD either. There is a lot of mods for the game on the PC specifically. So it is definitely still worth playing if you can install some of those widescreen mods and stuff like that. 
Yeah, so you play as a different character in this game as well. For those of you who've never played the game, you don't play as JC Denton, you play as a guy called Alex Denton, who can either be male or female, as you can see there, which was a good inclusion at the time. Not many games had that at the time. So you play as a guy called Alex Denton. It plays around with the ending, what ending you chose of the original Deus Ex, and it kind of mixes the three of those endings together to get the continuation into this game because this is a sequel this is actually the only sequel to the original game because Deus Ex Mankind Divided and Deus Ex Human Revolution are both prequels to the whole entire series at least it was kept it was moving forward I've never been a huge fan of prequels if I'm being honest just I just don't see the point in a prequel because we already understand the characters as to where they are in a story because we've played through the story if we watched the film. So you kind of want to see where the character goes, not where the character has been, because we, we already know who the character is if it's a well-made film or a well-made game by playing through it. So I've never really been a fan of prequels. I don't really understand them. I don't think I like any prequel, actually. Funnily enough, though, the Star Wars prequels, I'm not, uh, I'm not, as, I'm not as badly against them as many people in the world are. Again, a full color manual. That just was, it was just commonplace with these Xbox games back in the back in the day. It's really, really a lost art. The color manual is a lovely thing. It's nice and blue. And there's lots of hacking and stuff. But it's like a really, do you know what it is? It's a really simplified version of Deus Ex, the original Deus Ex. It's a very simplified version of that game. And that's probably why it got a bit of backlash at the time. Many people didn't think it was great. A personal invitation to Alex D from Taurus Academies. There's a lot more speech, talking, puzzles, or if you could say that, talking decisions in this game where you like have to side with factions and stuff, uh, which what, like there was a lot of that in the original Deus Ex, but it seems like it's way deeper here. It was like they couldn't make a big expansive world because of the limitations of the Xbox. So what they did instead was made a big expansive dialogue system. So the dialogue is quite interesting actually in the game. And yeah, Warren Spector, he is the, the basically it's his brainchild and he then was involved with the sequel, which is good. Because usually those auteur directors like Warren Spector just kind of, they kind of feck off, don't they, after they make a great game. I like that he stuck around for the sequel, even though the sequel wasn't greatly received, you know, at the time. So that is the manual, fully true. Technical support at EDOS. Yeah, with Iron Storm, as they say, the... <laughs> The good half of Iron Storm, the half of Iron Storm that made great games. <laughs> Iron Storm Austin. Yeah, it's a really interesting story about Iron Storm. Just a quick bit of information before we close up. If you're interested, please do stick around. Iron Storm is John Romero's company who he made after he left id Software. And then there was two branches. He basically started going around to like auteur directors and saying, Come to our company, we'll give you loads of money and you can make the game you've always wanted to make. And he came along to Warren Spector and he said, Warren, come make whatever game you want to make. The best game you've ever wanted to make, make that. And Warren was like, absolutely, came along, made Deus Ex and stayed with the Austin branch then for a while making games like this and games like, I think Thief Deadly Shadows was an Austin game as well. And of course then you've got the bad side of Iron Storm, which is sadly the John Romero side with a Daikatana, if you've ever heard of Daikatana. It's a it's great, I actually enjoyed the game, <laughs> funnily enough, but uh, it was critically banned at the time, and the N64 port is terrible. But, that's a small history lesson on Iron Storm. Do check it out, it's really interesting. Iron Storm are a great, great company, or were a great company, rather, they're not really around anymore. But yes, there you go. Really glad to have another only on Xbox game back in my collection. I'm sure I had this before, I can't 100% remember because of that purge of about 50 games it wasn't 200 like i said in the last video yeah so it's nice to have this in the collection anna look only on xbox how could you go wrong how could you go wrong with only on xbox you know there it's a great little thing it's a nice thing to have the collection of only on xbox games so ladies and gents my name is jack you've been watching what's in the box deus ex invisible water is now in the collection please like comment and subscribe and we'll see you the next time goodbye